Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Billy. Today I have a uh, two sweater-ish type of garments that I will share with you today. And today's garments are very much a continuation of the sweaters that I made uh, in my video 71. The first garment that I will share with you today is an A-line skirt uh, that I made as a coordinating piece to go with this sweater that I first shared with you in my video 71. So what happened was after I made this sweater, I had uh, just about under one yard of this about 58 or 60 inch wide uh, woven wool fabric left over. And uh, so because I didn't really need another sweater made from the same fabric, I thought I would make a skirt uh, to go with this sweater. And traditionally my go-to skirt has been a new look pattern that I have used for countless uh, dresses and also standalone skirts. However, uh, that new look quarter circle skirt will require more than one yard of fabric. So. So because I only one yard of this fabric or just under, so that was just not enough. So then I turned to uh, a, a self-drafted pattern. So if you recall in my video uh, 66, I shared with you how I uh, marked the waist seam of a shift dress and then separating the shift dress into a separate top and a skirt. And so today's A-line skirt is um, made using the bottom portion of that shift dress. The original dress or the skirt portion of the dress that I talked about in my video 66 um, has uh, two waist stars in the front and also two waist stars in the back. However, because this fabric is, is quite thick and uh, so I wanted to eliminate those waist darts. And traditionally in pattern making, you would actually, uh, instead of slash and spread, you would do a slash and sort of close to close out the dart. But since I made that muslin that I shared with you in video 66, I know like this, this is the back portion and I already sewn up the waist darts already. So what I did is super simple. I just laid this muslin piece directly on my fabric. And so therefore the dart was already eliminated. And when you eliminate a dart, the waist seam will look a bit more curved, such as this. So this is the, uh, the back piece and this is the front piece as you can see it's a little you know curved here and so that's just what I did so it's super simple uh, however I did have to make quite a bit of modifications uh, in this case uh, because the skirt portion of a dress traditionally would have a a lot of ease at the waist area however as a standalone skirt normally the waist would sit a lot closer to you know the body and so in this case I will I have to I just cut out the same uh, dress portion as you know as part of the dress then I just have to start pinching in so what I did was uh, so this is a skirt so what I did was just I have to as I tried it on I just have to keep pinching it in so that it will be much closer to my waist so for example this is the a-line shape and so I just kind of pinch pinch in uh, and so that it would you know so now it's a fairly close fit to my actual waist and originally that skirt has a sort of a you know muted a-line but in this case, because this fabric is fairly drapey, so as a result, the A-line did not look very, you know, obvious. The shaping is not very obvious. So in my case, I also had to reduce the seam allowance toward the hem portion, you know, like this, the hem portion here. So then the it will have a much more exaggerated A-line. Uh, to compensate for the fact that this is a very drapey fabric. And so it, this whole garment took me one entire day of a weekend. I mean, not the entire day, obviously I was doing other things as well, but pretty much, you know, during my free time on a weekend day, I, I you know I spent making this 
um, skirt. Uh, so it was a bit of a labor of love, but I am so glad how it turned out. Uh, it worked so great. And it's just perfect, you know, as to go with a sweater. And so now I actually have an ensemble that is good enough for work. Uh, so I'm really happy about that. And uh, because I actually have some fabric left over, I made a belt uh, to go with it. So in this case, it's just a simple belt and then use a buckle. So, you know, so this is what it looks like. So here is a sort of a close up look of the skirt itself. As you can see, it's an A-line shape and it has a you know very smooth front because I eliminated darts for both the front and the back. Uh, so it's a very, you know, streamlined uh, look. So I'm very happy about that. And in this case, uh, to give it a little more support, instead of lining the stress uh, in silk or say uh, rayon viscose, I lined it with some uh, quilting cotton. And so it's a bit of a matching sort of a autumnal look. And so this is the quilting cotton. And so this is the lining. In this case, the lining ended up being a bit short because I changed my mind about the length of the skirt. Originally, I had wanted to make it a bit more of a mid-side, or probably not mid-side, but definitely a bit, definitely maybe two inches above the knee. Uh, but then I changed my mind because I wanted it to be something that is suitable for work. So I, so it ended up being a bit longer, and as a result, the lining is a bit on the short side. But that's okay; nobody would see. So one point about the construction of this skirt is that, uh, well, as you can see now, you know, it's a simple, just fold over like this. It's actually not a fold over. It's just exactly the lining and the outer fabric are exactly the same size. And so I just did just like sold over around the waist seam and then flip over and then under stitch on the lining side. And this is not how I normally uh, construct a skirt. Normally when I construct a skirt, I will also make a separate waistband because uh, the waistband will give it more structure. However, in this case, this fabric is just too thick uh, to have a waistband because a waistband, the way I construct it, there will be four layers of fabric. And in this case, one layer is already quite thick and my machine already has trouble sewing two layers of this fabric already. So a waistband would just add too much bulk, uh, both from a construction technical, technicality point of view and also just from wearing it, it would just have so much bulk at the waist seam. So I didn't think that would uh, work very well. And also about the finish of this hem, normally I like to finish my skirt hem or dress hem using the invisible uh, foot of my machine. However, in this case, this fabric is so thick, it just also was not really possible. So I just sold a straight stitch across. But the reason I decided to do this instead of hand finishing the hem is because uh, this fabric is very thick and I just from working on this sweater, I knew that the stitching will really sink into the fabric. And so therefore, even when I do a straight stitch, it's not really visible. So, so then that's why I figured I could take the shortcut without compromising on the final sort of finish of the skirt. So I'm really happy about that. So here is a quick video of this ensemble and I paired it with a pair of three and a half inch heels in mahogany. And I'm just so glad, you know, just by adding a simple skirt, all of a sudden I transformed a sweater uh, that is suitable, obviously, for weekend and casual outings into something that is perfectly suitable for work. Uh, so I'm really happy how, uh, how the simple addition really adds uh, to the versatility of the sweater. So I'm really happy that I uh, made this coordinating piece. The second garment that I will share with you today is this sweater here made from a yard of about a 60 inch wide woven wool that I purchased from moofabrics.com 
a little over two years ago. And uh, so here is a close-up look of the sort of the the print, not the print, the pattern uh, on this fabric. As you can see, it's, it's a bit of a diamond uh, design, diamond shaped. And so I, uh, I really like it. About this fabric, um, in a way, is a little interesting. Um, I bought this fabric, you know, well over two years ago. And same thing with um, the fabrics that I used for the sweater and also the sweater dress that I talked about in my video 71. And the reason it took me so long to use these fabrics is that when I first got them, I just was not in love with them at all. I just did not like them. And I guess because I bought them online and they were different from what I thought they would be. And so they were just been sitting in my stash all this time. And uh, when I decided to make some sweaters in early January this year, I decided to try them out. And I was really pleasantly surprised how well they turned out. And so I've been making these, and in a way, I'm really uh, making a dent in my uh, sort of winter wool stash. And uh, so I'm really happy about that. So about this fabric, it's actually, um, even though it has a right side and the wrong side, I was debating which side I actually want to use. So here is a picture of the, the right and the wrong. And I think the right side is what I eventually end up using. You know, this one with a bit of a kind of boucle looking texture. But the reverse side actually shows the, the woven pattern much better. And uh, so I wasn't sure which side I wanted to use originally. So when I was cutting out this, uh, this sweater, I really paid attention to the pattern matching and uh, because I didn't know which side I would use. And if I decided to use the reverse side that had a very uh, prominent pattern, then I want, wanted to make sure that, you know, whatever I made would uh, have very good pattern matching, sort of a continuation of the pattern and so it will show that some thought went into that so anyway but eventually i decided i wanted to have the more muted look of the boucle side and so that's what i ended up uh making and but uh, but you know what I, I am quite you know proud i guess of myself how it turned out so as you can see this you know the diamond shape here is in the center front and then it just goes around and then I try to match it. One side, I think, is a little more successful than the other side. You know, so here. So overall, you know, this one, the front piece and the back piece um, are at the same level. And so they do continue on. And the back piece also, you know, with the diamond in the center back as well. And for the sleeves also, uh, you can see here, this is the front, but this part is the back. And I was able to uh, match it, so it, you know, it looks like this. The pattern that I used, or based on, uh, is also the good old New Look 6246 that I have been using for the last few videos. So namely, uh, the pajamas in video 70, and the turtleneck sweaters in video 71, and also the, uh, the tops with bow ties in my video 72. So they were all based on the new look 6246 with various hacks. And in this case, um, I also tried to do the sort of puffy bishop sleeve. But because I only had one yard of this, so so this is as much as I could cut out. You know, it's not quite full length, but since I am a big fan of the three quarter length sleeves anyway, so I'm very happy about uh, how you know the the sleeves turned out. And about the neckline, uh, this is a very simple, just sort of crew neck. I just I did search all the edges for this sweater, and I just turned it you know, under one side and just stitch it down. But originally I also wanted to make a 
a turtleneck. So I did cut off the turtleneck piece. However, uh, the tur because the sweater, this fabric, is a very sturdy uh, woven wool, I think. And as a result, the turtleneck just stand up like super stiff and it just looked awful. And so, so I removed it. And originally I was thinking what I could use uh, with the fabric from the turtleneck piece. But then, you know, after looking at a couple of other alternatives, I decided to just leave it alone and have this very simple crew neck. And so it actually turned out I'm really happy how this works out. Um, so you can see it's a it's not super close to the neckline because generally that has not been my preference. And so I am very happy about sort of a little wider open crew neck, but it's not so big that it's a boat neck, for example. And because I just simply top stitched this down to finish the neckline. Um, so what I did was well, because this fabric, you know, it's a bit of a sort of a gradation of, you know, black to uh, white. And so what I did was for this portion, I used black threads for this. But for this part, I used white threads for this. And so, uh, so this is what it looks like. Even though because of the indentation, you know, the pressure from the stitching, it looks a bit like there is a dark line here, but really the the um, the threads that I use uh, were white for the both top and the bobbin threads. So that's what it looks like. And I think that in a way it gives it a bit more finished look because originally I just top stitched the whole thing with black threads. And then so of course the black thread uh, for the top was very obvious and I decided I didn't care for that so I just unpicked it and then you know switched over to the white thread and uh, so I am much happier about this result. One aspect about the construction of the sweater is the shoulder seam here. Um, so a couple of the, the, the sweaters and also the t-shirt that I made suffer from uh, droopy shoulders, you know, meaning this portion really got stretched out, you know, from the weight uh, of the sleeves. And so a couple of you kindly suggested that I should reinforce the uh, the shoulder seam because obviously this portion is a bit on the bias. So naturally it would stretch, you know, it's just more prone to stretching, especially if the fabric itself is stretch, stretchy. And so what I did was I cut out a piece of uh, cushion cotton from scraps and then I sandwiched the seam uh, using that scraps. And because the scraps, uh, because of cushion cotton was cut on the grain, so it will not stretch. So this way it really uh, secure the shoulder seam. And uh, so in this case, as you can see, this is my shoulder seam. So exactly where it should be, so it didn't stretch uh, you know, down to below. So it works out really great. And so I'm really happy about this method. You know, it didn't cost me anything because I just used some scraps of uh, cotton cotton. And, uh, and so that works out great. And also about the cuffs for the, the three quarter length sleeves, because, you know, it's three quarter length. So it sits here. So naturally the cuff circumference will need to be larger than the circumference for a cuff that would rest in my wrist area. And so originally I cut out the, uh, because I only have one yard of fabric, so I cut out as much as I could. So originally the circumference, the net circumference of this cuff was 10 inches. And uh, while it was not uncomfortable, it was not also, so comfortable either um and uh but luckily since i decided not to use that uh turtleneck piece i just recut the the cuffs for these so now the new cuffs um have a uh, a circumference of 11 inches you know net and that made a huge difference it really works out great the original 10 inch circumference would have been fine if the fabric or you know since sort of t-shirt kind of fabric so fairly thin 
but because this is fairly very thick wool and so there is just a lot of bulk you know um, on the underside of this and as a result that was just uncomfortable and since I had this fabric anyway from the turtleneck so I just changed it so then I'm very happy about this so now it's fairly loose fitting so I can you know raise my arm with no issue whatsoever and one thing that was interesting for me was that originally when I use the narrow cuffs you really see the effect of the cinched in sort of puffy bishop sleeves but just by increasing the circumference of the cuff by one inch now it looks you know much more muted you can still see you know it's cinched in but not a whole lot and so i was really surprised by the uh the dramatic difference of the puffiness um even though i really like the other version better you know more cinched in with more defined uh puff but since that one was not comfortable because the cuff size was just a bit on the small size so obviously i always have to choose function <laughs> over uh, aesthetics you know because otherwise I simply would not wear the sweater so that would just be a waste of time anyway so but you know what I am still really happy about this so uh, I'm glad and by the time I'm filming this it's been I think well over two weeks since I finished this sweater and so now as I you know was getting ready to uh, film this I actually did not miss the old sort of more cinched in look so really truly happy about how this uh, works out and so here is a quick video of this uh, diamond shaped sweater and I paired it with a pair of blue jeans and a pair of ballet flats in black and I really like this look it's a very casual weekend kind of look uh, but because of the sort of a puffy bishop three-quarter length sleeve it actually gives it you know so it doesn't look too casual it still allow me to look well dressed but still it's a casual weekend kind of look so I am very happy about how the sweater turned out the third garment that I will share with you today is this skirt here uh, made from under one yard of about 60 inch wide wool fabric that I also purchased from moofabrics.com and this one was purchased quite a while ago I think easily two and a half years ago and uh, so here's a close-up look of this uh, wool fabric and as you can see it's a magenta colored uh, base with a uh, gray kind of grids you know throughout um, straight lines so this is the so this is what it looks like I previously used the same fabric uh, to make a cape that I talked about in my video 15 uh, however I no longer have that cape because that one was uh, given away as a gift uh, to my sister so I don't have it anymore uh, but I still have plenty of this fabric left over uh, because when I first started sewing I would just buy an extra amount of fabric thinking that I would make a lot of mistakes and therefore I will need additional fabrics to complete a project but actually it turns out I never needed any extra at all I mean uh, I have been quite fortunate you know and so really nothing has really become so disastrous that I need to recut everything um, so it has worked out great so originally I bought five yards of that fabric and so now after the cape and the skirt I think I still have about uh, two to two and a half yards of this fabric left so I do have a plan to make a some sort of a matching or coordinating Chanel ish type of little jacket so that would be that is sort of a future plan but I have no immediate plan to make that right away because I would need to research the fab the uh, the pattern that I want to use and also figure out a lot of things but anyway I digress so about the skirt um, is that I after the success of the tweet skirt that I shared with you earlier uh, I was just so pleased with it and I had no plan really to make the skirt 
But then I was looking at my uh, my stash, which has really shrunk quite a bit because of the the recent uh, sweater wool wool mix. Uh, so I thought, okay, let me use this fabric because I had plenty of this fabric. So I definitely could make an ensemble out of this uh, fabric that I had. And so I wanted to try the skirt first. So that was what I did because it's a, it's a simple skirt and it, it doesn't take a whole lot of time to make. So in a way, it's a bit of an instant gratification kind of make. And so I just did, you know, exactly that. Except in this case, um, this wool fabric uh, is not as densely woven as the tweed fabric earlier. As a result, even though I used the same pattern, it ended up being a bit more loose fitting. Uh, so for example, uh, here, you know, so this is my, so as you can see, it actually, this is my natural waist. But it actually sits below my natural waist uh, by about an inch. Um, so as a result, the skirt ended up being a bit longer than I originally planned. Originally, I planned to have make a bit of a more of a uh, above the knee length, but now it's just sits you know a little above the knee, but not as short as I originally planned. But I still liked it very much. Um, so you know it works out fine. And about the top, this is just a uh, cashmere sweater, I think, from J. Crew, but I'm not sure. And this thing is easily 10, 15 years old at this point. And when I was younger, I was just a big fan of twin sets. And all my friends were wearing twin sets anyway. And so I just had tons of those. And, uh, you know, the thing about garments made with high quality fabrics is that if you take care of them, they really will last for a long time. So really, you know, so this one has held up great. And so in a way, it's a perfect um, sort of coordinating piece for this magenta skirt. One thing about the construction of this magenta skirt is that even though the construction itself is fairly simple, but because the fabric has this grid design. So for me, the task was to make sure that the grids lined up. And uh, so normally the front of the skirt would be cut on the fold, but because I wanted to make sure that the grids were lined up and perfectly symmetrical, I cut you know one side first and then I cut the other side uh, next. And so here's a picture of how I did it. So basically I marked the center front line uh, with a couple pin with, so then you, I could, I know, you know, where to flip it over to the other side. And so this way I was able to cut out uh, the skirt front uh, exactly where I want it to be. Meaning that the grid here, you know, this one here, is exactly, you know, the center front of the skirt is exactly in the middle part of this uh, grid here. So that is the front. And for the back, I did exactly the same thing. Th this skirt has a center back zipper. And so when I was cutting out the, the two back pieces, I also, you know, look at the sewing line exactly as the middle part of this grid. Uh, or that square, but then I needed to add uh, the seam allowance. And in my case, I used the standard 5 eighths of an inch uh, or 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. So in a way, it will cut a bit, you know, past the center part of that grid or the middle line of the grid. And so that's what I did. And to ensure, uh, to also match the size seams, which I think is quite successful in this case, if I may say so myself, uh, you know, so the lines here match. So basically what I did was, I also just marked um, my pattern on the sewing line, so not on the cutting line. On the sewing line, just pick a place where I want, you know, just as a mark, and then I, and then I put the the front skirt piece and the back skirt piece and to see where that mark would fall on the back piece. And so that gives me, and also on the sewing line of the back piece. And so that tells me exactly where I need to place that pattern piece on the fabric. 
so when I sew it up, uh, the lines will continue. And so once I cut out a uh, one side of the back skirt piece, then I duplicate that, you know, to the other side, uh, for the other side of the skirt piece. And so that works out great. So I'm really happy about how it works out. So here is a closer look of the skirt itself. So you can see this is the front, and so with a slight A line, and uh, and this is the back of the skirt. As I mentioned, you know, I try to pattern match everything. So the center front and the center back will be exactly in the middle of that grid. And so this is what it looks like. And this is a side view uh, of the skirt. And in this case, because uh, here is a, there is a center back zipper here. But in this case, because the wool fabric is fairly thick. So when I was um, inserting the invisible zipper, I had to sew it a little bit uh, away from the groove right next to the T's of the invisible zipper. Um, otherwise, it would have been too difficult to uh, zip it up. Uh, I have learned it from before, so, uh, so don't ask me how. Uh, so, you know, this is the exterior uh, of that skirt. And about the lining, this is the uh, the quilting cotton. And I just thought this quilting cotton lining complements this skirt perfectly you know so in a way it's a sort of similar shade of magenta and pink and the, and this is the front itself and uh i don't know if you can see that the white there is a bit of a almost like a ghosting effect uh next to the hearts um from the color uh bleeding but it's still fine you know so i am still perfectly happy with this uh, lining fabric. It's just so cute and so darling. So I am really happy uh, about how the skirt turned out. The reason I am calling this magenta wool skirt my secret Valentine's Day skirt is because of the lining, as you can see here. So here is a quick video of this magenta wool skirt. And I paired the skirt uh, with this uh, sort of creamy white uh, cashmere top uh, with really cutesy kind of ruffled uh, neckline and also a pair of red uh, heels uh, about three and a half inches uh, it's by uh, Marc Jacobs. And I'm really happy about this combination and you know it's just really fun and uh, kind of girly and which is exactly what I liked. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed today's video. So I would like to wish you a very happy Valentine's Day 2022. So on that note, I hope you would stay safe, be well, and I hope I will see you soon. Bye-bye.